guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about debugging and we're gonna be using a method called caller to see how a method was called. So there are tricky situations in your Rails apps or Ruby apps in general where you might have callbacks or something dynamic, um, metaprogram stuff that is calling methods around your code. And what we wanna do is figure out how we can track that stuff down. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have a publish method on our post model and we're trying to figure out what was calling it. Um, we might have a background job calling publish. Maybe it's scheduled posts or something like that that is um, publishing these in a background job. Maybe it's a controller action. Maybe it's uh, some command object or something like that that has business logic that is running through validations and deciding whether or not it should be published or not. So there are lots of opportunities for this publish method to be called and we may um, be tracking down some weird situation that we can't really figure out easily why or where this is being called. So how do we go and debug something like that? Well, it can be very handy to know where your published method was called. So we can use caller here to get a list, an array, of all of the lines of code that are on the current stack trace. So when you get an error in Ruby and you see all of those lines, the array of lines of code that um, are there, that is what caller is going to give you back. So if we were to print out the caller array here and make a new post and we create a post and we click publish, what we'll see in the logs is we'll get this giant array printed out. So this is what we're looking at. Now it's not the easiest thing to see um, because of the way we're just printing this out. So maybe we should do a puts instead. So it'll be a little easier. Let's go back, click publish again, and uh, we'll see it printed out in a much cleaner array now. So this first line here says that um, the method or the line of code that called our publish bang method inside of our model, whatever called this method is the first line on our caller list. And that is our post controller line 61 in the publish method. So it's able to tell us exactly where a method call came from. So if we go to post controller rb line 61, sure enough, that is exactly what called the publish method on the post. So we could use this caller to find any of the places where this might be um, called. So we could have something like a after um, create commit publish bang. And we might have something like this where we'll auto publish a post, maybe only if maybe there's an autosave uh, feature or something and we could have autosave is true. And so, you know, we may have these complicated things set up that we'll call this method, but we don't know exactly when at a first glance or it's a complicated system and some of these might be in Rails engines or gems or something like that. All of this logic may not actually be right in that one visible place. So what we can do is we can then run our code here. We can create another post and this one should have called that publish method. We'll see our big long trace here. At the bottom, you'll see that it instead of starting in bin Rails, it started in Puma, which makes sense. It's running our Rails server, and Puma is the one that boots itself up, then it loads Rail ties, and then it starts Rack and Action Pack for routing and all of that stuff. And at the very top, where we see the most recent line, um, that is here in our active support callbacks. So if we look at caller, we can instantly know that, hey, this is going to be the place um, that called the publish method. So some callback inside of active record was calling the publish method. And we could then narrow down our focus and look for callbacks that mention publish. Um, so that is a you know useful little tool for us to go look around and see where the heck is this coming from. So there are other times where you might have something um, you know, in your action controller stuff. And you might have a before action that's being added by something else. And you can add caller to your method and see, hey, this before action was calling this method and so on. And, and really kind of 
dial in your debugging a little bit faster this way because you can see the same um, the the execu execution path. Now this array of lines looks very familiar to your error. Uh, stack trace and that's because it's basically the exact same thing when you get an error you want to know exactly what happened and how did we get to this um, situation and what line of code failed caller basically gives you exactly that except for the current line of code because it skips that and says hey you wanted to know who called you not what um, current line you are on so it gives you that context um, for everything before the current method call so that is really it. Kernel uh, is where the method is defined, caller. Um, and you can give it some ranges and start and a length as well if you want to uh, modify stuff. Um, and I believe caller start one, I bet you you could pa pass in zero, caller zero. And that would be like the stack trace that you get from an error message. Let's try that out and see. I don't actually know, doing this live. Uh, I guess it would help for us to put that out. So we'll try this one more time. Boom, boom, create post. And we'll see here what we get. So there we go. So if you pass in zero, um, it's going to give you the full stack trace like you would see in your errors. So we can see exactly that this is the line of code we are calling caller on, but by default, the argument start one skips that first line, which is the current location. So you don't need to know that when you're looking for who called you. Um, so they do that for you automatically, but you can just jump around it if you did want to keep track of that um, yourself for whatever reason. The other thing you can do is call caller locations, which is the same thing as above, except for instead of getting strings back in an array, it gives you a um, array of these location objects with which have some methods on them. So these have the ability for you to ask for the absolute path, the labels, um, line number and pass. So if you wanted to do something more complicated with this, you could, but in our case, for debugging, uh, just seeing the list of those locations printed out as strings is all we really need. So yeah, caller and caller locations are two really useful little methods here that uh, I tend to use occasionally, but when they do come in handy, they are extremely handy and uh, can save you a lot of time. So that was one that uh, popped up on my radar yesterday as I was debugging a method that was being called by before action that I didn't know where it was being called. Um, and I discovered it by dropping in caller in there and uh, playing around. So you can also, if you wanted to, instead of calling caller right in your code, you can binding um, dot IRB and then in the IRB session, call the caller to see. And this will give you a quick access to caller and other variables and other things you might want to do for debugging. So we'll still probably usually uh, start with binding IRB, jump into the REPL there and then use caller to see, hey, who called me um, and why? Why? What were they doing and why did this end up here? So that's it for this episode. It was a quick one, but I think a very useful um, pro tip to know is caller.